All right. So welcome to the 2021 Ellipse, everybody. I'm so glad to have everybody here. I really do wish we were meeting in person in Pittsburgh. But uh, as I said, while we were just hanging out before we started, we will get to the Carnegie Science Center to say hey in person to Carissa and friends. But we're glad that they're here virtually. Oh, and we will be hitting Pittsburgh in 2023 for the in-person lips. Stay tuned for that. So I'm going to be your host for this ellipse, most if not all of the time. I'm Terry Berglund, um, Director of Education and Co-Founder at Digitalis, and I like to call myself the Chief Instigator for LIPS and similar um, spin-offs like LIPSA and other LIPS style events. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and talk about sponsors. Mark Webb, I was going to kick it over to him because he has been acting as our sponsor liaison, which saves me a lot of time and effort, making sure all the sponsors have what they need and know what to expect from LIPS. So this year is our second ELIPS, but the first time that we have had sponsors. And this year we're doing 15 minute sponsor presentations. We limited it to 10 sponsors. We do that for the in-person lips as well. And that's mainly so that the schedule doesn't get full of sponsor presentations, which can happen at uh, conferences. I also do wanna make sure that there's plenty of time for regular attendee lens sessions as well. So that is why lips cap. And our sponsors, I'm gonna name them in, um, in order. Today we have presentations from ABI, Audio Visual Imagineering, Laser Fantasy, and Goto. And then tomorrow we have Skyscan and Sia, uh, Digitalis, and ENS and Spitz. Thursday we have Alumbra, e Planetarium, and Open Space. And then Friday, Siler Instruments. So thank you to all of those companies for supporting live planetarium programs. And just to put on my um, planetarium presenter hat, I know from experience that interfaces and design play a huge role in whether they're able to do live interactive programs or how easy they are to do. And so all of these companies have shown that they are committed to facilitating live interactive programs. So kudos to you. I'm not gonna clap loudly because I don't want to hurt anybody's ears, but thank you to everybody for their support of Lips and Elips. So you might remember that this planetarium was going to host Lips in 2020. Um, we had a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful set of plans. Oh, we were making great progress and all of a sudden it became obvious that this coronavirus thing was going to make it impossible to meet in person in 2020. So then we thought, well, we'll just have it in uh, at the Fisk and Lips 2021. And it became pretty clear that it wasn't going to be gone by this past summer. And so I approached the Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who kindly agreed to host in September, which we, if you work in the Science Center field, you know, September is kind of a downtime for Science Centers. Um, it's after the summer camps, but before the school groups start coming in earnest. So they agreed to that. And then uh, lo and behold, coronavirus kept going. And so that didn't work after all. Um, but if you missed my saying this once or twice already, we will be hitting the Carnegie Science Center in 2023 for LIPS there. And we'll get to the FISC next year for LIPS 2022 with uh, announcements of what to expect on Friday. It's actually the closing session of the ELIPS. You want to run through like the regular speech about how and why LIPS got started and what is unique about it for people that might be new? We or can you certainly want me do, that. To do that. I can also do some of that if you want me to. Go for it. I'm going to be talking a lot. The, I think the core difference, like you, you specifically noted the fact that we limit the amount of vendor sure. presentation, and that's because for a lot of, a lot of conferences, you end up spending a lot more time listening to vendors than you do listening to other, um, other planetarium presenters or members, which is is fine but also not fine at the same time like it has its advantages and disadvantages and this is a place where we've chosen to kind of flip the script on that a little um the other thing is that and this will probably be a little, be a little different on virtual but we always want people to make sure that their presentations are actually live the life of being a live presentation and an interactive presentation now i expect that all of you will be alive when you present virtually um, but one of the things that we always want is to make sure that your presentation is as interactive as possible. That may be more challenging than usual on virtual, so we'll give people a pass this year. But I think normally that's something we always really push for. I know that my the very first lips ever, I had one presentation planned, and then when I saw sort of what the philosophy that Carrie was 
promoting was I went back to my hotel room, reworked my plan to make it much more interactive and it was a much better, better thing. So um, that's why I like lips and that's why I always try to make sure that I can make it, especially when it's in the summer, it's harder in September, but. Yeah, there's no one perfect time for everybody. So we kind of try to move it around a little bit. Summer's easier for colleges, universities, school districts. Uh, as I mentioned, September is a great time for the science centers. Yeah, alternating, it gives everyone a chance to be upset. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that, that is a very mad at me at the same way time. to put that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of assume people were familiar with LIPS history, so make sure to find that out, Keith. Um, Digitalis hosted the first LIPS in 2011, and Keith had such a great time that he volunteered to host the next one in 2012. Yeah, Elizabeth, this is actually the 11th LIPS. Um, the second ellipse. Last year was the 10th. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Andy Krejci again for um, organizing that big lift lovathon for me. I really appreciate that. I have my uh, somewhere. My lips award was one of the first things I moved back over to my old, new again office. So it's behind me. I'll try to dig it out. Mark Webb, I saw you pop in. Well, I talked a little bit about sponsors and thank our sponsors, right. um, but now they've seen your face and uh, I can thank you in person for handling all those little details and taking that off my plate. Not a problem. It's really nothing, nothing major. Yeah, it's it. You know, LIPS is a small and tight knit organization and everybody, who is here, whether they be sponsor or ordinary planetarian, um, it, we're all in the same thing. We're all in the same boat. We're, we're working together. Remember though, what does Carrie always say? Lips is a movement, not, not an organization, movement. right? Actually, I think Mark is the one who coined that phrase. Oh, was it Mark? I just that? shamelessly yeah. stole it. I, I, that's what I've been told. <laughs> I just recognize genius when I hear it. So <laughs> yeah, well, and it is, and yeah, I would say at eleven years in, it's a successful movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, pretty much everybody in the uh, business has heard or participated at some point. Um, you know, so uh, we we really have sort of added some new energy to the presentation. So. 